Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to take the models, going over how to extract them from background to create um, isolated models. So we can go after take them inside the our backdrop that was pre-render and creating compositing based on this. So right here before compositing, so we can add um, models. We're going over to add all these additional effects going to work with the shadows, backlights, highlights, enhancing backgrounds, and adding all these additional elements. So in the end, we can have our compositing result. So let's go ahead and start working on this. First step, what I want to do with compositing, it is isolated models that we have it from background. And after slightly retouch them, so prepare for the compositing, create after smart object and insert in our background. So right here we have it, our models. And what I'm going to do it is duplicate our layer. And then this layer, we're going to use the pen tool. And I'm going to actually take pen tool and go around. However, you notice right here we have the hair, hair around here and hair a little bit around there. It will be kind of difficult to go on with pen tool. So what are we going to do? It's a start. Let's go with our pen tool. Work around slightly our brush. Okay, going closer to the hair. And when hair begin, I'm just going around hair like this. So I will use it combine masks, and you see in a second what I'm going to do to put it all of them together. Again, we go down there and you notice when you create you have those handles as you drag just follow the curve so if I'm following the curve as I'm going it will create nice and smooth adjustments for me so I'm going right here create a curve follow the curve handles follow the curve and you can see how it's going the one thing trick when I do this I want to stay about one pixel inside so if I'm going inside I'm staying one pixel inside Again, I'm just following the curve with my handles and we'll just go around our model to selecting. Okay, so we'll go right there, creating adjustment. So what I'm going to do, it is going with my pen around my models all the way. I'm going to pause tutorial till I'm all done. I don't want you to wait on this and the resume when I'm finished creating my path. Okay, so right here when we create path, one thing what you want to right click and select uh, with the pen tool. Sorry, I'd kind of done this already, but right here, if you have a new path you created, you just right click and select create vector mask. So we'll, we won't do this way. But let me actually undo that stuff. But you can notice right here we create our mask, vector mask from the path. This is our working path we created. And if we look closer, right here we went around the hair a couple places. So at this point to work with the hair, what we, we can select just those areas. To do this, we'll go to the select color range and we'll just click on the side with a hair we can hold down shift button and if we need we can select additional colors but it seems like cover okay with our fuzziness we can reset probably around there I don't worry about any other areas only what I worried about right with a hair like it like lines hair here here on there and other side so we're ignoring all other areas Okay, when we think it's look good, let's go ahead and click OK. And you can see it's create selections. Same layer that we have before. If we're going and press right now, create mask, you can see it's create mask. Let's go command control I to inverse. And now we have it isolated here. Of course, we have now problem with some elements like an eyes and everything. And we can easy fix it by hold down alt key and click on a raster mask that will bring for us our selection. We'll go set brush. 
Let's select this brush to hard edge. Okay. Also, we want to be sure it's white color and set to 100% opacity. And now we can just paint all of those areas. Again, if we look closer, we don't really worry about this area. We already mask. So I'm just going closer as I can to just this edge done here. Okay, same go around there. Okay. And at this moment, same things, we'll just do this way. Okay, let's zoom out. And we'll just remove here. So all what we need to do is just create this mask. Let's go ahead, re enable again. And now because our vector mask hold all of the shape, our raster mask will hold just with the hair we wore it. In this case we have more accurate and nice hair. You can see how it's representing. Okay, so we're done with the hair. And this is our model. Let's switch from this. Let's apply a couple layers to this model. And by the way, I do like sharp edges. And I do like the on an image so you don't have it, uh, too much depth of field. So when I photo shoot, I photo shoot with f stop 8, 9, 10, 11. So I have a very sharp image all the way. Because in Photoshop, we can easy, and you'll see, we can easily apply uh, blur to the edge, and we can take from light to dark. But it's much harder to do this from blur to sharpness opposite way. So it's the reason why we're doing it this way. Uh, let's go create new layer. And let's go quality touching. We'll just parent with this. And you can do this by select and um, clipping, or we can just hold down Alt key and move mouse, and you can see when arrow appears. We'll just click, and now arrow showing it is clipping to our parent. So it's meaning whatever changes we do, it will, like painting, it will apply only to our parent or masking below. So we're kind of good on this. Okay, in the retouching, we're going to use um, healing brush tool. Let's now zoom in, and mostly it's look okay, but I just want still maybe um, adjust cup dot chops. So we'll go pick touch up some elements right here. This is actually a very good clean skin. Yeah, small. And what I'm doing, I hold down Alt key, take sample of the skin or area where I want it, and put this in the place where I want to replace. She have a very nice paint face. I don't want to mess up, but a couple things maybe right here, a little bit rough, but I don't worry about rough because we'll go to fix a couple things there as well. So this is one way. Next, let's go to create new layer by combining core visual. It is shift control alt E on a PC and command option shift E on a Mac. So we'll go smooth this one. Okay, we'll go to filter, noise, dust and scratches. And this is a little bit too much. We'll go a little bit down so I can recognize eyes. So click OK. We'll create new layer a new mask. And command or control I will inverse that mask for us. Now we can take our brush. We want to switch to the soft round. We also want to set our opacity to about 10. 9% will work fine. Let's go in and creating just move a little bit on a skin. Mostly forehead, noise, chin, neck. Just a little bit. Okay. Before, after, you can see it has, it's not that much, just a little bit smoothing, applying. On uh, this kind of robot, maybe a little bit more because we want to create more artificial look, metallic look. So I'm just maybe apply a little bit more on some areas. Okay, right here. Let's 
let's go in here arms okay, right there okay I think that is look all right let's go create now um, layer we'll create new layer called dodge and burn we'll fill up this with the uh, dodge and burn fill this with 50 percent gray and normal and i have a, just uh, another tutorial which is have the retouching you can see all of this step a little bit closer and a little bit slower when i'm showing how to do this is again same step just my basic retouching that applied okay we'll go clip that layer as well and switch to the soft light at this point we can have brush let's go have a black color 10 percent and we can start adding just slightly shadows these shadows and highlights it is not um, environment dependent so overall what i'm adding it is just generic shapes and generic shapes we have like our nose can be brighter like for example here will be highlights on some of those areas some area i want darker just add extra dimensions with the shadows and this is all just very generic shadowing elements okay right here add a little bit on the legs shoes okay so i think of that one okay um let's go add again control shift alt e or command option shift e global dot burn so we'll apply this layer as well okay and um actually you know what yeah we'll select this one now go image adjustments we'll go to black and white on this layer take our reds and yellows pop up a little bit up and we're going image adjustment shadow highlights we'll bring our shadow highlights up adjust a little bit darker brighter and we'll go switch this to soft light or all you can see just add a little bit more HDR kind of look it's what I'm going and again this is just generic when we're done let's control group this together we'll call model and we'll go right click and convert to smart object so in this case if I modify I can use it this image so let's go ahead and the next step we'll start work on the backdrop okay as a backdrop we have two images we have our PSD render that I created as well I run through HDR just create a little bit more on the shadows and we're going to combine but take HDR image and put it over our Photoshop again if you're interested in this process I have a 3d how to create this image and you can watch this on my YouTube channel so right now we have the images created some things like right here the grainy I want to fix it so for this we'll create mask on our layer HDR we'll take our brush it's a uh, because it's not transparent it's white we want to black 10 percent and we can actually uh, i don't want to do there i want to do on my layer so we'll have it black and we'll start on a mask adding and you can see just overall i want to fix a little bit on the light maybe just areas where introduced a little bit more digital noise but rest i want to leave it darker okay maybe a little bit in the edges corners just clean up a couple elements i think this way yeah it's look better okay so right here we have our backdrop let's go to our model now and as a selector tool we'll just click on a layer drag going over and drop on our scenery the model says larger size so we'll have it command or control t to bring our scale tool and we'll just scale down to place it so what size um 
when you're compositing, very important things to keep in um, view. One of them, our models, of course, need to be proportionally correct because if we do teeny tiny one Ant-Man, maybe this will work fine, but I want to create a normal size. So normal size, probably about this, if I put it by the stairs, the walk, so I think about maybe this size a little bit will be more appropriate for this. But um, we can always change because this is smart object, so it's kind of nice. We can modify this way. Okay, let's put them inside here. Um, what is important for us? It is that com to sell this compositing correctly, we need to have it properly horizontal line. So horizontal line need be matched between our models. We also need to match our colors. We need to match our luminosity. So currently the models stay out because the luminosity is different and coloring tone is different. The fastest way to do it is um, the use curves. So we're going to create first curve. Let's go call color. Okay, we'll switch normal blending to the color mode. And in this case, we'll go with the blue and I see it's cyanish color a little bit yellowish so we apply but again uh, we need to hold alt key and be sure it's clipping to our model and we'll just take blue just a little bit adjusting uh, okay right here our blue just a little bit adjust our blue thin and we'll go to red and bring cyan slightly in so right here we have a little bit tone matching between our models before and after next let's work on luminosity so we'll do same creating curve we'll switch this to luminosity type as well we want to clip it so it's all come together and now we'll take our shadows and highlights and just bring them kind of Flatten slightly. Because it's haze, it's go this way and just a little bit adjustment. Okay, we don't need to be 100% accurate, however, uh, we could done by taking black points and set this way, but also the eyes will be fast and it work very well. Okay, so right here we have it, our matching luminosity. We're matching colors with our model. And if you notice, it's before and after. So you can see they're matching. Um, very important, it is process of the shadows. So we need, we want to put it shadows here. To do this, we need to go below our models, just above our backdrop. Okay. So our layer backdrop, and you know what, let's color it's a red color, so we know. We'll create a new one, and a shadow, so let's go valid. We'll call it shadow. And we have two types of the shadows, actually more than two, but let's start with two. One of them is a short shadows, and if you look closer, it is, will be by the shoes and longer. We also can have it reflective, and we'll have it directional shadows. So it's ma too many shadows. The one thing when we want to switch this to um, multiply mode, and nice things about multiply mode, that it is um, also hold the color. So if I go right dark and select, and now I can paint with 10% lower brush, can paint just by the shoes. It will also hold it the color for me. You now let's go with 20%, it's a little bit faster. And I'm just painting right here under the shoe a little bit, very close up, but you notice it's quite a bit darker. So it is, like if you notice right here, we have it softer shadows and darker shadows. So we see short. That's so what we're we doing. We're doing soft, uh, hard shadows first. Close up. Okay. And you can see how already it's look like models sitting, but we'll go a new one. So let's go create long shadows. Same we're going with multiply and same brush. We'll just 10% again set. 
so our opacity 10 percent and we'll just add a little bit shadowing overall color like right there you can see again it's a soft shadows we don't need it applied okay this is nice and again if it's too strong remember we can always just take it down a little bit okay next shadows i want to apply it, it is reflected so we select model we'll go create new layer and automatically it will clip for us the reflective shadows it is if you look on the shoes you see the white it's one cast white if if you compare to even here you can see it's cast darker that's what happening we want you to simulate this well same color that's selected or we can select another kind of similar switch to multiply mode we can start paint notice because we clip it will stay to the shoes the one thing what i want to do be sure my edge the shoes getting closer to my floor color okay again we can just simply a little bit closer to the floor and right there you can see we start matching a little bit better so go right there let's go to paint a little bit more on our shoes right now we're doing close-up so i just want to be sure the edges it's match because it's very important for us the better the edge matching the better effect and you can see even with this edge matching it's already a look a little bit more there okay let's increase slightly size and because it is costly a bit more we just were all add to the darken to the shoes right here let's make kind of because the lights going overall we can see we have it before and after so let's create our shadows and again before shadows the model is flooding and we adding shadows models fit a little bit better okay uh this is one effect next we want to do it is um introduce some softer effect because we have sharp cut off on our models but we want to introduce a little bit of the blurring so it will be anti-aliasing on the edges because if we look on the models right there we have a little bit anti-aliasing and we don't have too close on our model to do this let's go ahead click hold down control or command and left click on the model and you'll see it's create this marching ends they outline our model path so what we needed masking so next we'll go to select and go select modify we'll go to contract we'll go contract by one pixel click ok select modify feathering and we'll feather by two pixel when we've done this, um, be sure our model layer is selected. We'll click and create a mask. So let's look closer at what's happening. If you look on the right there on the hair, okay, before and after, you can see how it is blending now edge much better, like right in this area example. Okay, right here where's the hair going. Okay, before and after. So it does apply kind of nicely blend in with our models with our background okay so we're done with this let's also other effect will have it lights on the back and as lights project it should actually cost a little bit more light spill on our models to do this we'll create a light spill effect on them as well so same things as we did before control or command click on our models so we'll select the mask next we'll go and create a new layer and let's call it light spill okay so when we're done with light spill we want to fill up but we want to fill up with color that is our lights so let's go ahead click on our main color and as we are using picker tool we'll just pick tool of the light click ok and hold down alt or a command control or command backspace or you can go to edit fill and inside add fill we have foreground color 100 percent okay so it will fill with this color okay it while it's still selecting what we want to do it is shrink a little bit of this 
mask. So we go to filter, oh, sorry, select, modify, contract, and let's contract maybe by about nine pixels. Or you know what, maybe even 12 pixels. So we have it quite a bit going inside. Okay, as we done this, we'll now press delete. And you can see it's created this outline. I don't know, maybe it is a little bit too big, but we'll work in a second. So next, we want to actually remove some of those edges. We'll go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we'll just add a little bit more, maybe around nine filters, same as we have at border, so nine, nine. Click OK and switch the mode to the soft light. So at this point, let's don't look on all over because we'll need change. But if we come closer to this area, and you can see before and after, so we add some highlights. However, the highlights apply everywhere where they don't need it. Remove, we'll go create a new mask on this. Black color, let's pop up to about 50%. And I'm just going to remove, like on down shoes, I don't want it. Maybe right here, legs a little bit. And of course, on the shoes, I don't want. It won't be here. We'll just remove all of this around. Maybe around here, just slightly. We'll apply. Remove from her face. Leave it on a hand, but we remove it from bottom. It's usually if lights go from there, we're just going where does it will work. Because her face here, it won't be, but it will go on shoulders. Okay, maybe a little bit on the leg. Well, again, we can go bring back some areas. And there, before and after. You can see we just add a little bit highlights. So right here, a little bit highlight don't need to be. So let's um, X and remove it. Highlight from this area. There you go. Okay. So here's our models and we created highlights on them. The couple other things I want to do, it is creating directional shadows. So if we um, zoom out a little bit, the light behind the shadows should create it around this area. We can just draw this. The other ways we can do it, and I just want to show you techniques, it's when we select create new outline. Let's go below the long shadows, create a new. Let's call it a drop shadow. Okay. And as it's selected, let's go select black and white. I'll go to edit, fill. Our foreground is black and we'll fill with black color. Let's select and we'll just move it for now so you can see. Right here we created our shadow. So we can do edit, transform, flip vertically. So now we have it, our shadow kind of created. Um, but you can see the feed does not match necessarily very good. So what we need to do, it is using puppet tool to adjust those shadows. So let's go ahead, do this. We'll go select, edit, and we'll go select the puppet warp. We'll clip this front Let's clip this, click on this one, drag to front, click this up front, drag, oops, control Z, I actually want to drag this front, maybe a little bit more. And now let's go select the heel, put it heel here. Just there and bring, but again, it's come up quite a bit off, so we'll go fix some other ones. And you know what, let's drag a little bit out, because the shadow is going... You can see it's look kind of funny, but in some cases it's much easy just to draw sometimes shadows, but as example we go look on this. Okay, right there. Let's click OK. And a now effect, let's take this shadow, move it out so you can see what's happening. This is dark shadows, okay? And um, very straight. So we want to apply 
to the shadows a little bit more blur because what's happening when it's go down it's blur increasing as going high for this we'll go to filter blur gallery gallery going to tilt and shift and we'll apply tilt and shift from top so right here we'll bring in and we'll start increasing blur and you can see what's happening the blur is actually work very well so we'll go like this let's go around there click OK so now we applied to our shadows so of course the most of the shadows will be hiding because we don't really will show but it, it just let you know if you want to create other drop shadow you can do create this way um, also I think just normal occasion blur okay, just a little bit softer on this one will apply as well let's switch this mode to the our multiply mode and it's too strong so we'll take it down and just a little bit applying just a little bit touch so we can see over um, you can do same way reflection actually if you have any reflections we'll probably do same way and it will create only will switch to the soft light instead of multiply in this case Okay, next let's add some elements to blend these models to our environment. We did create some um, overall shadows. Now we want to also create on our model. Let's go create new and it will be dodge and burn. Of course, as dodge and burn, we want to use it our 50% gray. Right here, we'll go switch this to the soft light. And now we'll take our brush be sure it's a soft round brush select it let's set 10 percent opacity and we'll now can start adding shadows and because they're kind of behind the lights so we can a little bit add to the shoes right here maybe switch to the light add a little bit more on the back where the lights will highlight stuff okay again a little bit of shadows it just now we're adding more environmental shadows to them so kind of bring them closer into there also this color and luminosity what i want to do sorry to bring right close to the model because otherwise it's they become affecting our layers which we don't want necessarily them to do that so we'll have the models, we'll have the color luminosity and our adjustments and some shadows and light spills above. That way they won't be affecting um, lighting properly. Okay, so we're done with the highlights. Let's go to add some on a background, a little bit fog and smoke to work together with this. For this one, we'll go just below drop shadow, create new layer. Let's go, it's called smoke. We'll create brush, switch this to the white. And depend what you have, I have different brushes from Ron Brush, and I provide a link for this if you need it. Uh, you can have different as you win, or as you wash, or want, or have a different coloring. I think this one is work very good. I like them a lot. And right here, we can start creating just on the back of them a little bit. smoke it just helped blend or sell this you know inside okay okay also i notice lights let's work a little bit on a light we'll go light strikes okay and we'll go to select let's go hard light okay hard light we'll go to reduce our brush sizes we'll go with 100 percent and right here from the light I'm just going to select create with those lines go like this okay let's go make it even smaller some between them okay next we'll go to filter blur apply gaussian blur on them let's bring them closer maybe like around the area okay and we'll switch this to soft light and uh, let's bring just leave it down overall it just add this effect i want to stand those models out of the background and also nicely blend so the smoke and other effect will help us to sell this so above reference we'll create another smoke 
Okay, and let's go to orange. So we'll create new layer. Let's go drop on the top right here. Um, front smoke, it will help us to blend them together. Okay, right here, and we'll go to select brush again, white. Let's select a different type of the fog. We'll just select this one. Let's see how it's look. Yeah, it's look good. And if we just click up front, you can see already it start kind of blending, help us to blend together them. So it's bring um, elements a little bit together. Okay, let's go slightly down so we don't have that much tension. Maybe right here a little bit add. Okay. I think this is kind of blend them very well. So it will help us to combine when we have it items go over to elements. Okay, this K, uh, this time we want to create kind of bring all together with the creating um, general effects that apply all image. So control shift alt E, command option alt E, take together. And we'll just have this green effect applied by going image, jasmine, black and white. Well, let's bring a little bit yellow, red, and maybe darker and blue. Just add a little bit more contrast to this. We'll go to image adjustments, again, shadow highlights. Be sure you show more options enable. Bring highlights and shadows up. We'll take this to 11%. And let's tone down a little bit here. And bring this maybe a little bit up right there. Maybe like this slightly. Okay, let's go click OK. And we're going to change this to soft light. So you can see just brought a little bit more green to this. Okay, and we'll go switch this to maybe about like around there, maybe 40%, something around there. Okay, the next let's add um, a little bit more of the grain and we'll go create by new layer. Let's call this grain. Fill up this with 50% gray. Go to filter, noise, add noise. So we'll add 50% noise about, click OK, and switch to soft light. Okay, grain is too much. Of course, we'll have going with our opacity. And we'll just a little bit opacity, about 30%. Okay, next what I want to do is add curves. And we're going to select one curve. We'll switch this to the color. Okay, and a color. We're going to um, set to blue color first, blue channel. Bring up and middle down. So we'll just create this cold warm effect. We'll go to the red. Bring cyan back up and restore just a little bit red back up. So you can see we have it kind of nice coloring going over. Let's go to create um, new curve. Let's go call it luminosity. Okay, we'll switch this to luminosity blending mode, and we can take bring over all. We can bring contrast slightly down. foggy yeah I think it is just darker slightly okay so right here our image and of course if we want it we can add our name to this and I do like bring name sometimes it just um, name let me show pen so go right there and you can just put your name where you want it or you can also just hide or bring like an well, like right there we have it HA something so we can bring around here let's adjust scale I think around there will work let's switch this to the soft light and we'll just blend blend down of course, the best way to do it is, um, okay, let's go to normal. If we want to do this, we'll want to take a color, 
and maybe just select something this same similar green color that will help us to say look more closer again let's go to switch to soft light actually screen maybe work better on this case I'll just bring okay normal yeah because we match color we can go with just normal and and let's put it under grain so it will kind of bring this way kind of like this I think this is match closer enough so right here you can see we just added some elements so I'll have it your name instead but it will go out okay so right here is our image we created and again this is just a step example how we did our um, the compositing overall most important steps it's a shadows reflective shadows our horizontal line must match our of course luminosity and color need to be match and um, just overall it is just small adjustments you can apply more additional effect additional smoke if you want it um, you can apply besides smoke you can add other effects maybe you know like steam going from here some other if you need it and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you like it please subscribe on YouTube and follow up on Instagram and let me know if you have any questions thank you for watching